Hi guys, welcome. Uh, today's tutorial, uh, we are going through the process for our DIY doormat that is found in your July subscription box. So you'll have your small core mat, you will have a brand new uh, ch one inch chip brush, you will have your Hello stencil. Uh, this is a permanent vinyl stencil so that it helps for adhesion on the mat. And you will also have uh, your seaside color. Um, seaside will be used for your mat, for um, your resin pour on your cutting board, as well as for the sign. So make sure that you leave enough uh, to do um, all of those projects. There is enough in that container and it won't take very much for your sign and it definitely takes just a speck for your resin pour. Um, so just make sure that you um, leave enough for all of those projects. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna take your vinyl stencil and you're going to flip it over. Because it's a, um, a permanent vinyl, you will notice that the adhesion um, or the tackiness of the vinyl is a lot more. So when you're peeling this off, sometimes the back wants to stick um, a little easier to the part that you're removing. So if it does that, then just um, stop give it a good rub and then continue on all right this one's doing not too bad and your pieces are a little bigger on this one so there we go okay so once that is done you can place this stencil wherever you would like um, i'm going to do mine in the bottom right corner if you want to stick it in the middle or any other place that is totally up to you so once you decide where you want to place this then apply it and give it a really good rub um, give me a second i'm just gonna go oh here it is um, in our workshops we used to use a wood block i'm just gonna use my scraper we use for applying our transfer tape um, but you just want to give it a good press so that it has a chance to grab onto some of those fibers. Now it's not permanent like um, you would stick it on a sign and when you peel it back, it's gonna stay. Um, you still will have um, to work very delicately removing the transfer tape in order to get uh, the vinyl stencil removed. So I'm going to show you how to do this and you must be patient. Now this is a small stencil so it's not gonna be um, quite as bad but um, you can't rush this part. So once you start to peel this corner, you'll notice that your vinyl stencil wants to come up. So you'll always want to have both hands in play. So I'm starting on my bottom corner here. And actually I'm just going to gently use both fingers or both hands and gently pull them apart okay so the vinyl stencil right now is not sticking and then i'm going to use my opposite hand so when you're doing this if you're right-handed then start from the left hand side so that way you can use your dominant hand to remove this if you're left-handed then start from the right hand side so that way you can use your left hand to do most of the work you'll find that to be a lot easier okay so once i've got this um, tape started um, then you're going to slowly pull um, evenly across now as I'm doing my sample I'm noticing that the littler stencils are a lot easy, harder to hold back than the bigger ones so just be patient you're going to need to use most of your hand and your thumb um, as you approach the inner pieces or where it starts to be cut so that way you're not lifting those as you're rolling this. Now you don't wanna pull on this cover because as soon as you pull on it, it will remove the stencil. So with this hand holding the black vinyl stencil and your dominant hand holding the transfer tape, you're going to roll it across without lifting it. And if you can, try not to scrunch this. If this stays flat, it will be a lot easier to allow it to roll across the surface. And as it gets a little longer, it'll be easier for it to roll. There we go. 
And if you have your hand on your stencil, then it just helps it from lifting. And then just reposition and slide it across. There we go. And then just watch for those pieces as um, they want to lift. Um, if any piece comes off as you're doing this, don't worry about it. You can easily go like the inner parts of the letters. Um, you can easily go back in and just hand place them uh, in the proper spot. It's, that's not a big deal. So, so as you can see, as I'm starting to roll and the pieces are getting a little longer, it's easier to control. So just be patient near the beginning. Um, and then just watch as you approach the areas that are cut as you roll up to them. Now with doing um, stenciling on a mat, we don't have to worry about bleeding. We don't seal our stencils like we do on a sign. So really the hardest part is getting the stencil on and after that it's, it's uh, super, super easy. So, okay, so there we go. So now just make sure all of your pieces, like if your inside letters happen to move, uh, make sure they're in the right spot, they look like the word's supposed to be, you can read it. And then just give this a nice little tap, smooth that out, um, any puckers that make the letter look a little odd. And um, it won't be super flat because it still has to, um, you know, it's not sticking permanently to your um, mat, but the permanent stuff does help grab a little bit easier. So. So definitely make sure you haven't lost any black pieces on there. If anything, it would be the E in the inside and maybe the O, but that's about it. Okay, so that is done. All right, so next you're gonna take your paint. Now, this really doesn't take a whole lot of paint. We're not saturating the fibers right down to the rubber of the mat. Um, two thin layers because you don't want to do too heavy because you don't want big blobs of paint stuck in the mat. So it's best to do two and um, and this cover color is going to cover very well. And I made the stencil as big as I can so if you're afraid that when you go to uh, paint that you're going to get some paint where you're not supposed to then you can take some painter's tape and just kind of overlap that. And I think I'm going to, cause that H is pretty close to the edge. So just do this. Normally we don't tape in a workshop, but like I said, I usually don't make them this close to the edge. So we're just gonna give us a little bit more coverage. Okay. So this is how you do it. So you'll have your chip brush. Yours will be brand new, mine's used. And you're just gonna put a little bit of paint. And I'm actually gonna brush some of that off. So you don't see big gobs of paint, it's just lightly um, covered in paint. Okay, and the motion you're going to do is you're going to stipple. So you're just going to pounce into the stencil and you don't want to get too much extra wet paint on the stencil so if you have some just come back and kind of grab it but you shouldn't have a lot on your brush to begin with um, so that will help too so you can see I did quite a bit just on that little bit so I dipped and then I uh, wiped it off so you can really see there is not a whole lot on my brush okay and then I'm going to start again Now your first coat, you might still see some of the orange from the mat underneath, so that is totally fine. Um, so for perhaps if you don't want to do Seaside that we provided you in your kit and you're looking to do another color that you may have in your um, stash of Fusion Mineral Paint, just know that anything orange, a light gray, taupey 
color, even white, um, is really hard to see against the matte. Anything dark and bright is your best options um, when doing a color on there. So you don't have to do seaside, but um, this is the color that we chose just because we thought it was um, nice and summery. So by doing a little paint too, it will dry faster. So you're going to um, leave it till the paint is dry. It, you, um, it will feel stiff on the mat. Uh, in the workshop, we would just use um, our little hand blowers. Um, so if you have a fan, you can you know put it on low in front of that, or you can just leave it um, and come back you know in 10 minutes or so. We don't have to worry about the vinyl being on here too long. You can walk away from this for hours and come back and do your second coat. It's not going to make a difference. Uh, just as long as your brush is either cleaned out or put somewhere in a plastic bag so it won't dry out. But you'll be good to have it sit there. But as you can see, this doesn't take that long to put the paint on. So. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it now. It's gonna dry and then I'm gonna come back and I will do the second coat and uh, We'll go from there um, But by the coverage on the first color second coat will be more than enough just to Solid up some of the lighter areas that I'm seeing and uh, we will be good to go. All right. I'll be back in a bit guys Okay, I'm back. So if you've left it for a little bit of time and you come back You should be able to touch your mat and no paint comes off and you're gonna find it to be stiff again, just like it was before we started. So I'm gonna grab my paint and my brush, and it's just fine to put in a bag and pull it out again. You don't have to wash your brush each time. And I'm gonna come again, dip it in the paint, brush off the extra, and then start to do exactly like you did before. And you're gonna notice that it's really going to solid up anything that you may have missed but as you can see this really takes me hardly any paint so the amount of paint that we provided you um, in your container is definitely going to be enough for you to do your three projects or if you decide to use a different color for your mat that's totally fine too So go ahead and finish your mat, and once I'm done and this is dry again, I will come back um, and sh show you how to remove it. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I'm back. So this isn't quite dry, but it's dry enough that I can remove the stencil and then just let it um, sit here and dry some more. Um, so what you'll just do is really just grab a corner and pull just like that. Nothing difficult. So if these pieces are wet, just kind of, you know, pinch them a bit, but they'll just come off extremely easily. You might have a little bit of paint on your fingers, but that is that part. Just go throw this in the garbage. Now, what I recommend with this is to give it uh, about 72 hours to start to dry and cure onto the mat. Um, Fusion does hold up very well um, on these mats, but you definitely want to give it some time to really adhere. Now, in our workshops, what we like to do is spray it with a clear rubberized sealant. Um, and obviously, I can't include that in your boxes. So, um, so what it is, is we use a product called Flex Seal and it's clear. This is from Walmart, so you could get it at Walmart or probably any of the hardware stores, but make sure it's clear because uh, it does come in black as well. Um, use usually the uses for you know sealing different um, stuff and leaks around your home, but it's clear and we'll give it a good shake and we'll do a coat over. Um, the stenciled area you could spray your whole mat it doesn't really change the um, matte texture um, it just kind of absorbs into the into the fibers i don't really notice any sheen with it but it is a 
a very highly toxic smelling product so you definitely want to spray this outside and give this you know five ten minutes to kind of dry before you bring it into the house um, you can store it in the garage or whatever just till it has a chance to uh, cure and then you can set it outside or on your porch or um, that kind of stuff you can layer it with another mat underneath you know it's one of those decorative you know ones with some pattern that's really cute um, but yeah it's just a cute little mat um, for you to use wherever you feel you need a mat so I hope you enjoyed this project. I really like doing this one. It's a lot of fun and uh, it's uh, super simple. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing your guys' um, projects. You know, see what you've done, if you've changed it up at all. And uh, yeah, all right. Well, thanks guys.